seriously? Hey you guys, and welcome to this video with me, Six Bus Stevo. So yeah, as you probably guessed from the thumbnail and the title, this is a rant, and um, it's a bit of a moan, and it's in regards to the Eighth Edition Orc Codex, and it is about these things. No, 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 it's not. We're not going to open that Viper's Nest. No, it's nothing to do with base sizes. Um. It's also nothing to do with uh, the competitiveness of the codex or sort of changes to anything in regards to the meta or points increases on boys. It's not to do with that. Um, I have no issue with boys going up to seven points now. They're, they're good. It seems okay. Um, yeah, it's nothing to do with any of that. I will be getting to that in future videos the Orc Codex itself and the changes of rules and stuff. Um, most of our stuff's got better. Um, most of it's dropped in points. Some things have gone up in points. Uh, so it's been rebalanced and stuff. And I, from what I see of it, um, it all looks really good. And I can't wait to get it in my hands. And overall, I've got to say, I am massively pleased and I'm pumped. And I can't wait to get that book in my hands and get playing. The reason this video is a rant is because I want to ask GW a question. I want to ask you guys, why do you hate kit bashers, converters, and scratch builders? What have you got against us? And this is this is particularly apt when it comes to the Orc Codex, because I think Orc players... I'm not saying other factions don't kit bash and convert. They do. And there's some amazing stuff out there, and they really do. But with orcs in particular, it is probably the best reason to play orcs. The sheer wealth of options and possibilities that you have. The fact that these guys make most of their stuff out of scrap metal and they cobble it together. You know, this stuff doesn't come off a production line. These aren't STC builds, like with Space Marines and stuff. Um, they're not like elegant machines like you get with the Elder and stuff. These are just literally scrap heap, scrap heap challenge, Mad Max style vehicles and killer cans and etc. And that is what makes them so, so fun. Now, the reason I'm asking GW this question is because there has been some changes in the Orc Codex. And uh, like I say, the changes, and so they've, they've dropped some things, so we've lost big guns. We knew, I think most of us kind of had a feeling that was going to happen. So we've lost cannons, mortars, um, the, uh, uh, what's it called, zap gun. We've lost that in terms of the big gun anyway. Um, so we've lost them, and that, so mech guns have fully replaced them now, as we kind of knew was happening. But we've lost some other stuff as well, and uh, it's, it's quite bad. We've lost, one thing that I wasn't expecting to lose is the big mech um we've got the big mech in mega armor we've got the big mech with shock attack gun but we have lost the standard big mech and this upsets me quite a lot because i spent quite a lot of time converting my own big mechs which let's move the camera down so you can see them i've already did a video on these a long time ago here they are. I don't know how well the camera's picking these guys up. I've got two big mechs, both with custom force fields that I made. So I've got this guy putting a lot of work on him. Especially around the backpack area. You can see all the different parts that went into converting this. There's a bit off the Morkonauts bit there. There's a bit off the custom mega cannon. There's I can't even remember. This bit came off a bit of the looters. I've got a bit off the uh, mech kit from like the burner sprue. Uh, the body is that of a um, Black Reach knob. Um, it's cut one of the arms off. I've given him one of the heads from the knob set. This dude here, say most of the parts here come from the standard knob set with a few bits from the Mega Knob set to build him. And uh, yeah, so I, I was quite pleased with these guys. Like I say, one of my first videos was covering these guys. 
Now, the reason GW have got rid of them is because they no longer sell the model for them. Um, and this is their policy at the moment to, uh, if they don't sell a model, they won't have a data sheet for it. And it, it sucks. It really does suck. It's, um, it's a real shame because people can, I, I understand from a business standpoint what they're doing. I mean, it cuts out, if they don't make something for a data sheet, third parties jump on, they build an alternative, which people can snap, go out and buy. So GWC is they're losing money. Um, GW haven't lost money on these because these are all GW parts. And I think most of the people that kit bash and convert and make their own stuff and, you know, do this kind of thing still predominantly use GW parts. We're still spending our money on GW stuff. And it's just, in my opinion, it's a real shame. Um, Competitively, I'm not bothered really because I think competitively, the big mech in Merigrama is um, even for the points difference they were was so much more a viable option than these. I just like these for the character. I like the fluff. I liked, you know, I really like these models. They're useless to me now. Well, they're not useless because currently, we can still use the index rules with them. But how much longer is that going to last? That's not going to be there forever, guys. So I mean, please before you mention that in the comments, say well you can just use it from the index. You know. Quit your moaning, which I'm sure we'll get a few comments of. Um, but believe me when I tell you, the index rules will not be um, usable for long. They're going to phase them out very quickly. We are one of the last codexes to come out. We've got Gene Steeler Cult to come. It's not going to be long after that. Um, as we keep getting FAQs and erratas and stuff that tweak things and change points and do all this stuff and change the rules and the wordings and things, and the game's going to evolve and change. And as it keeps doing that, those indexes are going to become more and more and more outdated. And then you're going to start getting things of rules, conflictions and points, conflictions come into it. And they're going to say, do you know what? Indexes are done now. And that is that is coming. And then they're gone forever. They're never coming back. These are never coming back, most probably. And that wasn't it either. Um, I think from what I hear, we've lost the options with to have um, them on bikes, which... I don't have the models, but I'm sure loads of people out there have kit bashed and customised, you know, mechs on bikes and things, um, which again is a real shame, and uh, it's a real, real shame. And secondly, the trucks and the battle wagons no longer have the option to have rocket launchers on them. Um, why have they done this? The same reason, it's because they don't have that option in the kit. When you buy the truck kit, it only has the option for the big shooter. When you buy the battle wagon kit, it has the option for the kill cannon and the zap gun and the, the big shooters to be mounted on it. It has no rocket launchers in there. So they've just done away with that option. What about all the people that have converted them on? What about all the people that have gone through time and effort and money because they've probably bought the rocket launcher bits or got them out of other GW kits for the most part. And uh, they've built these things, you know, whether they've done it for competitive reasons, whether they've done it for fluff reasons. Um, I myself did it to my truck. Here it is. This was, it's not finished yet, still not finished. He's been left half finished for a long time, but this is my um, looted tower ox, basically, that I use as a rocket truck. And uh, doesn't look like much, but this took me quite a long time to sort of figure it all out and get it working and getting it sitting right. And I was quite pleased with how he came out. Again, one of my first videos was showing off this. And like I say, he's not quite finished yet. He's been left unfinished for so long. Um, and it's quite good, actually, that he's not finished. And it's also quite good that I didn't glue this bit down because I can now, I'm going to have to change something and change it to a big shooter. Luckily, I didn't glue that bit down. And the reason I made that was because I wanted a customised transport for my tank busters. And to me, it felt right, fluff-wise, that the vehicle a tank buster would choose would also be loaded with rockets. So he would add that one rocket shot to the thing. Now, actually, rocket trucks were really shit because it never hit. Uh, rockets very rarely hit unless you've got the sort of tank buster reroll rules. So I didn't do this for competitive reasons. I did it for fluff reasons because a big shooter is actually a much better option to have on a truck. It's cheaper and much more reliable. 
I'm I'm a bit I'm I'm just a bit gutted about that. I'm a bit gutted that my two big mechs now are useless. I don't know what to do with these guys. Um, should I rip them apart? Should I just convert them back into standard knobs? I'm looking at this guy now, and I'm really pleased with how he came out. Like the backpack and stuff. I'm that that took a lot of work. All different parts getting that right. And I'm sure these are these are fairly minor conversions. There's guys out there much more talented than me that have put in so much more work than me and uh, have painstakingly you know, created their own vehicles, created their own stuff to work alongside the rules. And look, I know stuff changes and we do lose stuff over time. And you know, you don't, if they just kept adding to the codex all the time, all the codexes would be massive by now. And we'd still have all the characters that we've always had over the years. We always do go through these phases. When each new codex comes out, you gain a load of stuff, but you're always gonna lose a few bits here and there. And I do understand that. Um, but there wasn't any good. They, they've just they're doing it for the wrong reasons. They think it's good for business, but I, I think what they fail to realise is that most of their die-hard, proper die-hard, loyal customers that have been with them for years and will continue to be with them are people that do a lot of kit bashing and converting. And I miss the days. I miss the days when GW actively encouraged it. For example, let's look at this little sneak peek. I'm going to be doing a video on this codex soon. But, see this? Scratch built Death Dread. Converted trucks. Examples of kit bashed models. They had in here rules for flash kits. There were no models for flash kits. They did not exist. They encouraged you to convert and build your own and convert your own. This was good stuff from GW. I remember the very first edition. Well, I don't remember it because I got into 40K around third edition properly. Experimented with second edition a little bit when I was far too young. But I remember first edition, Rogue Trader. Um, and I think it carried through to a couple of the later editions as well. Um, they had a model in there of a vehicle made out of a deodorant can, can you believe? And they gave tips and advice on how you could convert your own stuff. And it was um, crude in them, you know, but by the, those standards of that day, there wasn't, you know, we didn't have all the choices of these really good, highly detailed plastic kits. We didn't have like the resin stuff, you know, we didn't have models were of a very different, they weren't as detailed and as good as they are now, put it that way. Um, so this stuff they showed was very crude and very amateurish by today's standards, but it was, it was great that it encouraged us to let out our creativity and imagination. And let's face it, we're playing a game with little toy soldiers. We're playing a game, you know, with, this is all about our imagination. These are static still models, but when we play it in our mind's eye, they're firing off shots at each other. They're hacking each other to pieces and there's explosions going off and all craziness. And it's all about the imagination and creativity. And I worry that as they continue along this path, they're going to carry on just releasing kits and you will only have the rules for what's in the kit. And it won't give you these options to do something a little different. For me personally speaking, I remember in that Orc Codex when I got it, one of the first units I really wanted didn't get round to it at the time but what I really wanted was a unit of flash kits and the reason I wanted them so bad was because there was no models for them so instantly that sparked my imagination I read their little bit of fluff I read their rules I read about the snares guns and everything and I thought oh cool I can get some bits from looters sets I can get the knobs set I can combine them I can chop bits up that got me really excited and you know what I probably would have spent more money with GW, that would have cost me more than buying a flash kit set because I would have been buying stuff and chopping it up and I would have been buying several sets to use the parts to mix them all up and actually a lot of the time over the years I remember thinking back when I built my custom Chaos Lord um, I bought when they used to sell bits on GW site back when we had a lot of metal models and they sold different parts and components and you could order them separately and I ordered all lots, lots of different parts to build my own custom Chaos Lord from scratch. He cost me so much more than it would have done just to gone out and buy a Chaos Lord. Um, so they made more money out of me because I wanted to convert my own. Now that's not true of everyone because some people do go around it by kit bashing and using plastic card and using parts from third party companies like Cromlech and 
Spellcrow, etc. So I, I do understand it from their point of view. But I think the money they lose on those bits is not anywhere near what they gain from encouraging this sort of stuff. And even if they were to lose a little bit of money in the short term, I think it would actually encourage more of us to be more loyal and spend more money with them because it's just a really cool thing to do. And it's one of the greatest parts of the hobby, especially for Orc players, but not exclusively Orc players. It's one of the best things for the hobby. I love kit bashing. I love converting stuff. I've never really done anything scratch building yet. Um, I had blast building my own terrain. Um, and I just think it's just, I don't know, it's just going to be a real shame, I think. And I feel sorry for a lot of the guys out there that have spent time and money and lovingly crafted a lot of this stuff, like mechs on bikes, mechs on foot with custom force fields, trucks, battle wagons loaded with rockets, um, all those people that built all those looted wagons years ago. It's just a shame. Um, so GW, please, please, just because your kit doesn't contain an option for a certain weapon, don't get rid of it for that reason. If it's for competitive reasons, if it's for balance reasons, if it's something that's hurting the game, then yeah, by all means, make the fixes you need to do. But if it's purely because of that, how hard is it to stick a rocket on a truck or a battle wagon? God, if you wanted to be really lazy, you could just take the rocket from the end of a rocket launcher and stick it on the end of a big shooter. It, to me, it wouldn't look great, but it would work. And I'm sure a load of people have done it that simply. It's not bloody hard. Um, it's um, I don't know what else to say. I'm just really annoyed. And uh, it's wound me up a bit, actually, and it's it's disappointed me. And it's put a slight tarnish on the 8th edition or codex. But putting all that to one side, ran over the 8th edition or codex, regardless of losing these couple of little bits that I've talked about, looks amazing. Um, all the leaks and all the reviews that I'm seeing on them, I've been watching Striking Scorpions review, I've been watching Mini Wargaming's review, it's really exciting. I can't wait to get playing. Orcs are going to be really competitive now. The options with all the clan cultures and stuff looks incredible. Um, the fact that we are now on a level playing field with all these other Codex armies is, is brilliant. We can really have some good, fun, balanced, competitive games now. Uh, no longer are we going to be forced to play just hordes of boys. Um, no longer are our specialist orc armies just going to be trampled into the dust like they're nothing. Um, that's going to be fantastic. And it's going to be really, really cool. And I love it. So this is not a rant about the codex itself because it looks amazing. It's not a rant about base sizes because I'm not even going to touch on that. I've got my feelings on it. I'm not even going to get involved in that. I'm sure many other people will cover that one. Um, and it's not about bitching that my favourite unit's gone up in points or it's not as good as it used to be or any crap like that. It's nothing to do with that. It's literally to do with GW seeming to have something against kit bashers and converters and modellers and people that really want to individualise their stuff and make it personal and make it a bit different. And uh, have the options within the data sheets to allow them to do that. <sighs> Please, GW, reassess your policy on this. Please. It will benefit your company. It will definitely benefit your players. Um, yes, you may lose a little bit of money by people getting parts from third party. Um you may lose a little bit of people scratch building stuff. But I don't think you will, personally. I think you'll still continue to make millions and millions of pounds all the time. Um, but I think it's the right thing to do. And I think the community as a whole will thank you for it massively. Um, so give us options. Give us the option to have a pain boy on a bike, even if you don't make a model for it. It isn't hard to stick the torso of a pain boy on the legs of a fucking biker. It's not difficult. That's not a hard conversion to do. It's not difficult to turn a knob into a big mech. 
it's not difficult to stick rockets on your trucks and your battle wagons. It's not difficult at all. And I don't think it's going to upset people that they read something in the thing, look at their kit and go, well, that option isn't in the kit. I don't think that's really going to upset people that much. I really don't think it is. Because I think people that have the skills will convert it and change it. People that don't will just build the standard option. And... I don't know. It's disappointing. And I don't like seeing it go this way. This game's all about imagination and creativity. Um, you've done that within your list building. The options you've given us in there is great. But you've kind of on the other hand, you've taken it a little bit away from us in terms of the modelling and stuff. Um, sometimes necessity, like my tank busters, I built sort of more out of necessity. Um, you can convert something to look different. I can make a truck with a big shooter that easily, but I don't need to. Sometimes, actually, because the option's not there, it forces you to convert your own, and sometimes some of the best creations come out of necessity. Anyway, I'm rambling now, and I'm going on and on and on, and I'm going to have to accept it, and making this video has kind of helped to let me vent a little bit, I'm sure a lot of you guys feel the same as me. Maybe a lot of you don't. Maybe you think I'm banging on about nothing. Um, whichever side of the fence you fall on, share your comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Get the discussion going. and uh, But let's not get too sad about it because it is October. We've got an awesome new Orc Codex coming out. I'm currently building mega knobs. I'm building mech guns. And I'm converting, yes, I'm converting. I'm converting some mech guns, which you will see on the channel very soon. Um, and we'll probably make some videos along the way while I do that. And you can join me. Maybe we'll do them live. We'll have some fun. But um, anyway, guys, I'm, I'm rambling again. I'm rambling again. I always do this. Anyway, guys, uh, that's enough rambling for me. Share your thoughts below. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. And I'll see you on the next one. Six Plus Steve-O. Signing out.